Versace. The fashion brand is distinguished by its vivid colors, revealing attire, and iconic Medusa logo. Though the company is now valued well over $2 billion, it all began with a kid from a very underprivileged small town. Versace's journey to the top of the luxury fashion industry is phenomenal, but this is not simply a business success story. You see, Versace's life was taken in a cold-blooded murder. Gianni Versace was born in 1946 in an extremely poor Italian village with limited employment options. The local economy was so poor, and there were so many illiterate people, that many moved to other places in search of jobs as agricultural workers and coal miners. Despite their surroundings, his father Antonio sold appliances and his mother Francesca worked as a dressmaker. While staying in their hometown, their family was able to advance into the middle class. But things were far from perfect in the Versace household. Gianni had two siblings, his sister Fortunata and brother Santo. And in 1952, while visiting a carnival with the family, his sister scraped her knee and had tetanus. The doctor accidentally gave her the wrong medication to treat her, due to which she died within 24 hours. Johnny's parents chose to have another child to overcome this misery. This child was Donatella, and at the time, Johnny was 10 years old. Growing up, Johnny used to spend a lot of time at his mother's clothes boutique, observing her as she radiated confidence in her clients. However, his mother was worried that he wasn't putting enough time and effort into his studies. One day, his mother received a call to attend a parent-teacher conference at the school. The teacher showed his mother his diaries, which were filled with drawings of women. His teacher described him as a sex maniac, but his mother understood that he wasn't sketching the women. Rather, what stood out were their dresses. In 1965, when Johnny turned 19, Johnny's mother opened a store next to her workshop so he could go out on his own. He gave the store the name Ella de Francesca Versace and started exploring Europe in search of the finest dresses. He was purchasing provocative clothing, such as short cocktail dresses that exposed a lot of woman's skin. He was taking a big risk with this idea because at that time there was no fashion to reveal the skin, especially for their quiet little coastal town. But he was very aware of what younger women wanted. The boutique soon attracted a swarm of the town's women. And with that, Johnny Versace started his first profitable business. Johnny's mother was instructing him in dressmaking as he was supplying his boutique with the newest trends, allowing him to implement his unique design concepts into reality. At age 26, he made the decision to explore the biggest fashion world in Milan. He started working for companies like Mario Valentino, Jenny, Complis, and Callahan. For six years, Johnny worked as a freelancer and made connections with those in the Milan fashion industry. He was able to secure so many contracts that his annual income was well into the six figures. He finally came to the realization that it was time to show the world who he was. At the age of 32, he launched his own fashion line. The family was very important to Johnny. He appointed his sister Donatella as vice president and his brother Santo as CEO. He started Gianni Versace Spa with the help of both of them. And with that, the Versace brand started on its path to turning everyone in his family into multi-millionaires. Gianni aspired to make Versace a worldwide brand. He established his first shop in China in 1979. Other fashion houses at the time were largely ignoring the Asian market. But bringing Versace to China at such an early time would be incredibly profitable. He was far ahead of the competition and made Versace one of the top brands. Throughout the 1980s, he gained attention for dressing famous people, including Princess Diana, Michael Jackson, Cher, and Madonna. Johnny kept a secret throughout his rapid rise to fame and wealth. He was gay and in love with Antonio D'Amico. The family was concerned that disclosing his sexuality would damage the reputation of the business. He, therefore, kept his true identity hidden from the public for many years. In 1992, Johnny and Antonio together bought a mansion in the Miami neighborhood of Beach. But tragedy struck when Johnny Versace was found to have inner ear cancer in 1993. He later tested positive for HIV as well. Johnny started writing his last will and testament in case he died from his illness. 
but he had no idea he would be killed before his illness. On July 15, 1997, Johnny was taking a morning walk in front of his Miami home. He got himself a cup of coffee, along with copies of The New Yorker and Vogue. He found Andrew Cunanan, a 27-year-old man, waiting for him. Johnny was fatally shot by him and collapsed onto his front stairs. The bullet went through his body and coincidentally shot a nearby dove. When the police arrived, they found a dead dove next to his body. The FBI was looking for his killer, who was wanted for other killings in multiple states. He also appeared on an episode of America's Most Wanted. Andrew was discovered dead in a boathouse only eight days after murdering Johnny Versace. Investigation revealed that he had killed himself. Police found no evidence that they had ever spoken before the incident. So Andrew's real intentions are still a mystery. The Versace brand was valued at $807 million at the time of Johnny Versace's death. He left his sister Donatella 20% of the business at his will, and she carried on as the artistic and creative director of the company. Santo, his brother, who received 30%, later took over as chairman. Surprisingly, Gianni's niece, Allegra Versace Beck, who was 11 years old, received the remaining 50% of the business. After Gianni's death, several big companies approached the family and offered millions of dollars to take over the Versace brand. However, they held to the business and wished to carry on Johnny's legacy on their own. Donatella says, quote, It would have gone against my brother's beliefs to sell even one office chair. To him, the company was family, and you don't sell family. So despite all the odds against them, the Versace family persisted in managing the company on their own. In fact, Versace contributed to a pretty unexpected invention. Donatella created a dress in 2000 that Jennifer Lopez wore to the Grammy Awards. Everyone was talking about the dress, and it became the most popular search term on Google. But there was one problem. Google only supported text search in 2000. According to former Google CEO Eric Schmidt, the Google team realized the urgent need for an image search in order to meet people's demands. So, Google's decision to create an image search feature was actually inspired by Donatella's dress design. For the first time in 2014, the company earned less than expected profit and sales were falling. In order to grow the brand again, the Versace family finally sought outside help. At first, they appointed Jonathan Aykroyd as the new CEO and sold 20% of the business to a private equity group called the Blackstone Group. With Jonathan's assistance, Versace's brand was revived and the company had a comeback and increased popularity among younger audiences. But as time went on, it became evident that the Versace family's next generation would not take over the company. Santo and Donatella thought it was better to sell the business to keep their brother's brand alive long after they were gone. Versace was purchased by Capri Holdings in 2018 for $2.12 billion. Both Donatella and Santa were able to keep their jobs in the business, where they are still employed. The Versace family also acquired shares worth $176 million in Capri Holdings as part of the deal. The company, which was started by Johnny Versace in a small Italian town, now became a multi-billion dollar fashion brand. If he had not been murdered that day, he would have been 76 today and would have been a part of his company's beautiful journey. If you enjoy Twisted Stories, go check out the even crazier story of Susan Monica. Just click this thumbnail, and I'll see you there.